chapter 2 deals with evaluating limits uh, analytically. So we're going to try to evaluate a limit using uh, properties of limits, develop and use a strategy for finding limits, and evaluate a limit using dividing out and rationalizing techniques, and lastly evaluate a limit using the squeeze theorem. So the first thing we're going to talk about is some limits that are nice and easy for us. So we have learned that the limit of f of x as x approaches c does not depend on the value of f of x uh, of f at x equal to c. It may, however, uh, that the limit it may happen, however, that the limit is precisely f of c. In such cases, the limit can be evaluated by direct substitution. So that is basically saying the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to, of course, f of c for us. So that works out real nice for us anytime that that can happen. All you have to do is just substitute in c for x and into your function and it gives you the answer. Uh, such well-behaved functions are continuous at c, so therefore there's no holes, no breaks. Uh, it's really easy for us to calculate those just by doing this, using direct substitution. And this is the method that I would always try to do first, if it doesn't work, then you would go and try to find other ways. Uh, theorem 2.1, some basic limits. So it basically says the limit of b have, as x approaches c is equal to b, and the limit of x as x approaches c is equal to c, and the limit of x raised to the n power as x approaches c is equal to c to the n power. Now, those are kind of hard to understand. Sometimes these little theorems are going to be a little rough, but we'll look at some concrete examples here in this next slide. It should make it pretty easy. I'll get rid of the answers, uh, and we'll see if we can't do it. So not too bad. This is the example of the first one. It was actually, it was the limit of b as x approaches c is equal to b, and that's basically because b is a constant. So if you think about the function uh, 3, 3 would be a nice little constant function, uh, horizontal line for us, and it says the limit of 3 as x approaches 2. Well, here's the x value of 2. Well, as you can see, as you approach the left, from the left, uh, you're going to end up with a value of 3. As you approach from the right, you're going to end up with a value of 3. So it makes it pretty easy for us in a little limit like this. Anytime it's equal to a constant, it's just going to be that constant. And then here's our second example. So the limit of x as x approaches negative 4. Well, our little graph there uh, of x would be y is equal to x, which is just this little line right here with the slope of 1. And as x approaches negative 4, here you can see negative 4, the y value, of course, is negative 4. So all you'd have to do is just plug that in. If you plug in negative 4 for x, you're going to get negative 4, so therefore that's going to be our limit. Last example, the limit of x squared as x approaches 2. So obviously x squared, nice little quadratic for us. And at 2, you're going to get a value of 4. And then over on the last slide, it says, of course, if you have x to the n power, all you have to do is plug in, so it would really be 2 squared using direct substitution. And of course, we know 2 squared to be equal to 4, and that's great because it gives us the same function value as what we had over here.